train your cabin Read those books in a blink, oh yeah Grab yourself a hot drink cause you're watching how to train your Gavin Yep, that's me Hey guys, welcome back to How to Train Your Gavin. Today I'm doing my June book haul and after getting so many books in May, I thought I would have zero books to show you in June. Well, <laughs> I still have about over 30 to talk about today. <laughs> At least it's not as drastic as the 101 books that I got in May, so... At least we've calmed ourselves down. <laughs> to be fair, in May it was my birthday and honestly you guys were so generous and so amazing and wonderful so thank you so much to everyone who sent me something for my birthday. You absolutely didn't have to but I did just want to give you a quick little shout out again. And don't feel bad if you didn't get me anything for my birthday, you genuinely didn't need to. <laughs> but yeah, this is my book haul for June. So first I'm going to start off with the arcs that I received and then the books that were gifted to me and then the books that I got in subscription boxes and then we go from the books that I bought, middle grade, young adult, and then adult. So that is the structure of this video. I hope it goes okay. I'll put my coffee down and begin the video. One of the arcs I received in June was Never and Forever, which is the fourth and final book in the Wizards of One series by Cressida Cowell. I am so excited to read this book. I've not long finished the third book in anticipation of this one. I cannot wait to see how it all wraps up. There is this unknown narrator who I'm dying to find out who it is and this is the book that tells me who the narrator is and I'm so excited. The series, I've talked about it a lot in the, over the past couple of months, but the series is about a young boy wizard called Zar and a young girl warrior called Wish, and they are raised to be enemies, wizards against warriors, but there is this bigger common enemy, so they might have to join forces to beat this enemy. Just a sec. Sorry, I can't search that. But I can search by title, actors, year, Oh, what? Like... Stop. Okay, so, it, oh, no, oh, oh, no, stop. Stop Siri. Right, so for some reason it thinks I said hey, S word, but the series is about a young boy wizard called... What did I say to make it say hey Siri? Oh my god. Oh, this series maybe? And it thinks I said Siri. Oh, it's my accent. Even Siri can't understand me. So thank you so much Hada for sending me this book. I really wanted it. I was really cheeky and I emailed asking about it because I saw this in one of Cressida Cow's videos and I was like, mm, there are actual physical proofs of The Wizards of Once, the final book. I want me one of them and fortunately I was cheeky enough to ask and get one. So thank you so much for sending me this. Another arc I got was The Stitchers by Laurie and Lawrence and this is the first book in the Fright Watch series and I mentioned this one in my my most anticipated upcoming middle grade releases of 2020, quarter three, July, August, September 2020. Uh, that is a bit of a mouthful. And I'm sorry if the lighting has gone a bit funny. I don't know why it keeps doing that. This one was kindly sent to me by the author herself, all the way from America. And she also sent me a card in Harry Bowls. There was bookmarks and there was even a badge as well, which I think I've got in my badge collection. Honestly, thank you so much to Lorian for sending me this. You genuinely didn't have to, but you did all the way from America. So this is on my July TBR because this comes out in August. Cannot wait to read it. It's about a 13 year old girl called Quinn. For some reason, there are these like weird neighbors and she calls them the oldies. She doesn't know if they're vampires or aliens or some kind of strange other being and so I'm excited to find out what is up with these neighbours. But it looks very Goosebumps-ish and that's kind of why I really wanted to read this one because honestly Goosebumps was my life as you can tell. So I'm excited to read more spooky middle grades and this one's gonna be fantastic. So thank you again author for sending me this. You are incredible. Cannot wait to read it. I received The Beast and the Bethany by Jack Meggett Phillips from Egmont. Thank you so much for sending this one. I don't really know that much about it. I know it comes out in September. So what this says is Ebenezer Tweezer is a youthful five 511 year old who keeps a beast in the attic of his mansion. He feeds the beast all manner of things and in return the beast vomits out presents for Ebenezer. <laughs> but the beast grows ever greedier and it's bored of a diet of parrots and performing monkeys. It's time for a new meal. Has the beast met its match in the Bethany? So it says that's going to be the biggest and beastliest middle grade series since Lemony Snicket so I am really looking forward to reading this. I like how on the cover it looks like it's had a chunk bitten out of it. That's pretty cool. I love middle grade arcs. Sometimes they are some of the most creative. It's like a tear mark in there. Do not feed the beast. And then Oxford sent me Victoria Stitch Bad and Glittering by Harriet Moncaster. Harriet Moncaster writes the Isadora Moon book series for younger readers and I think this one is a bit more 9 to 12. Just 
based on the font and the writing. It's still filled with beautiful illustrations by Harriet herself. This one's also out September 3rd, and all I know about it is that there are two, there are twins, but yeah, Victoria Stitch and Celestine, and they're denied their royal birthright. One of them takes it okay, the other one doesn't, Victoria Stitch. She doesn't take it well, and she is obsessed with power or something like that. So it seems really good. I love the cover of this as well, and the illustrations. Harry Moncaster is a fantastic illustrator, so looking forward to reading this one as well. <laughs> as I've said about all the proofs, I don't accept proofs that I'm not excited to read. So those were the arcs. On to the books that were gifted to me. A huge, huge, huge thank you to Kia from Lazy Eye Reader for sending me the audiobook of, is it The Land of Stories, The Wish and Spell by Chris? Colfer and it's the first book in the Land of Story series and I've heard so many people will tell me to read this series. A lot of people really rape about it. Chris Colfer is the actor from Glee. He played Kurt and I used to love Glee so much and I've seen this series for quite a while. In fact I think it came out in 2012. I think that's when it started. It was quite early and I just don't know why I've never picked it up. It looks really interesting but thank you so much Kia for sending me the audiobook of that on Audible. I've never been gifted an audiobook before so that was really awesome. I love me an audiobook. I'm not too sure what it's about, but it says that they are described by Colfer as a modern day fairy tale following twins Alex and Connor Bailey. As they fall from the real world into a world full of fairy tales they have only ever read about before, and discovering there is more to this world that meets the eye. I love me a middle grade fantasy series that deals with fairy tales or has a fairy tale like feel, so I think it will be perfect for me. So, again, thank you so much, Kia, for sending me the audiobook. I was also gifted The Ship of Shadows by Maria Kuznia, and I got sent this by Maria's editor, I think it was. Maria really wanted me to get an ARC copy of this, but it was only going to be on Neck Alley, and I can't really read neck alley arcs. I might invest in a Kindle Paperwhite in the future just to see if that helps my eyesight when I'm reading on screens. As soon as a physical copy was available, Maria, I think it was her editor who sent me this, so thank you so much. I absolutely love this book. I've already read it. This one follows Alea who lives in this sort of Spanish city, and one day the Ship of Shadows docks into the into the port in this Spanish city, and Alea ends up joining this all-female crew on the Ship of Shadows, and they go on this incredible adventure. I cannot, cannot wait to talk more about this book. I talk about it more in my June wrap-up, and I am also doing an interview, a live Instagram interview with Maria Kuznia herself on her Instagram at Cozy Reads and that will be on Sunday July 19th at 5pm UK time so do mark that new calendars, do check it out. We won't be talking spoilers, we'll just be talking about the book and hyping it up a bit so do check that out and there may or may not be some costumes. So but yeah definitely check this one out, this comes out on July 16th and honestly phenomenal, amazing absolutely love it. So thank you again for sending me this. A huge thank you to Claire for sending me Wilderness by Roddy Doyle. Claire, you are incredible. I will link Claire's Instagram in the description box. She does amazing bookstagram photos. But she sent me Wilderness in this incredible Claire's subscription box, pretty much, which was for my birthday. And I got it at the start of June. And I'd never heard of this one before. So trust Claire to send me a middle grade I've never heard of. Claire is just as amazing at middle grade recommendations, by the way. But apparently there is a husky expedition in Finland and every minute is a thrill until the night their mother sled disappears in a swirling snowstorm. Back home on island, Grain prepares to confront the mother who abandoned her years before. When you've lost someone, how do you get them back? It sounds really good actually and look it really matches my outfit at the minute. A lot of blue. But thanks again Claire for sending me this, you'll always spoil me. Lisa also sent me a couple of books, one of them you'll already know about. Lisa also sent me a box full of things and they included Never Date a Doctor by Melanie A. Smith, the first book in a Life Lessons series, and also this beautiful edition of Emma by Jane Austen. Like this is a really gorgeous pink cover but it's got that kind of material, I don't know how, I don't know what to call it, I don't know how to call this material. It's a Word Cloud Classics book, but it is absolutely gorgeous and it feels incredible. It's so, it just, oh my god, I don't know how to describe it. How do I describe the feel of this book? It's cushiony. No, that's not right. You'll know what Emma is about. It is a Jane Austen book and there was a recent movie adaptation that I've not seen yet but I kind of want to. But also Never Date a Doctor, I've got a reading vlog on this. This was my first Steamy romance and I enjoyed it quite a fair bit. So check out that vlog if you haven't already for my full thoughts on this. Thank you so much Lisa for sending me that box. Thank you for sending these books. I absolutely love you. Thank you. Now for the books I got in subscription boxes. I got two books in the Tales by Mail June box which was a haunted house mysteries theme and it was the first ever Tales by Mail 
subscription box, so I will link that unboxing as well for you to check out. But in that box, it included Jack's Secret Summer by Jack Ryder, and also The House on Haunted Hill by Mickey Lish and Kelly Nye. And I am so excited to read these ones. I know this one's written by somebody who was in EastEnders like 20 years ago, who I had a big crush on, so that's pretty cool. And The House on Haunted Hill looks fantastic as well. Some people read this full believe -a -thon and gave it rave reviews. There are cryptic messages appearing around their grandfather's spooky house on Haunted Hill. The holiday takes a sinister turn. What is their magician grandfather up to? What's he not telling them about the disappearance of their grandmother? It just sounds really cool and I love the cover as well. But thank you for that Tales by Mail subscription box for sending two books in one box. I love it when that happens. And the last book I got in a subscription box was The Court of Miracles by Kester Grant. This one is a Les Mis retelling that I am going to be buddy reading with my patrons over at my Patreon. And I love this edition of it. It has this rose gold cover as well as this beautiful inside under the dust jacket look as well, which is gorgeous. I keep showing this off, but I do have an Illumicrate unboxing, which is where this book came from. So check that out. And you can also use my code Gavin5 to get 5% off off a three month or a six month subscription. It's just all of the reps, you know. <laughs> this is also signed and it's just a fantastically gorgeous book, Black Spread Edges. Oh, call me to read it. And yeah, Liam is retelling. Now onto the middle grade books that I bought myself. I got Ink Heart by Cornelia Funk. This is the first book in the is it Ink Spell series? I think that's what the series is called. I don't think it's called the Ink Heart series. Something, I don't know. But this has new covers illustrated by Carl James Mountford, who is like literally now one of my favourite cover illustrators of all time. He's just fantastic. I did get the third one gifted to me a couple of months back by Danielle at the Dancing Bookworm. So thank you so much for sending me the third one. I now have the first one, so I will buy the second one at some point. But I did just want to at least have the first one so I can start the series. And it is quite a chunky middle grade and it's translated from German. So I'm just really excited because I've heard a lot of great things about the series. It's a bit of a classic now. And I think it's about stories coming to life when her father reads them out loud, something like that. There is a film which I actually haven't watched yet. The next book I bought was Freedom by Katherine Johnson. This is a middle grade and it is about slavery in 1783. It's a really short middle grade. I, I was expecting it to be longer, but this does follow Nat who was a slave in Jamaica and his master brings him over to London and he thinks being a slave in London will be better than being a slave in Jamaica, but I think that something happens that allows Nat to be free and I'm not too sure about the the series of events in this one but I'm really interested in reading it. I've heard so many great reviews about Katherine Johnson and her writing. I think it'll just be really eye-opening to see slavery in a middle grade perspective and how it deals with that topic. So yeah, interesting in reading this. The next book I got was Mike Drop by Shauna Jackson. This is a sequel to High Rise Mystery which is a fantastic middle grade mystery book and I'm not, I have no idea what this one is about. So we have Nick and Nova in the, like this is the first one, we had Nick and Nova try to solve a mystery in their high rise block in this like council estate. So it's very British, it's a great middle grade mystery. I'll pop that one back. And uh, apparently there's been another murder on the try, so yes, there is another murder and they're going to solve it. So I'm looking forward to reading it. Might be perfect for the Believeathon 3 mystery theme, yeah. I then picked up The Jumbies and Rise of the Jumbies by Tracy Baptiste. I picked these up because I was recommended them on Twitter when I was after more middle grades written by black authors. This is also the middle grade monthly August book club pick. So we're gonna be reading this in August. All I know is that I follow is Corinne and I think parents make up these stories about the Jumbies to scare kids and it turns out the Jumbies might actually be real. But yeah, it weaves Caribbean folk tales into this as well. So I love stories that do that. So I'm really excited to read it. I think it's gonna be a fantastic middle grade monthly book club pick. And yeah, I'll most likely be reading both of them in the same month. So I'm looking forward to that. Another book I picked up was Ghost Squad by Clarabelle A. Ortega. This one has been described to me as like Coco meets Stranger Things, which piqued my interest straight away. I also hear it's a little bit like Ghostbusters. So I think it follows a young girl, loosely Luna, who can say, ghosts. So in that sense it sounds a little bit like Ghost Whisperer but for kids. And honestly I used to love Ghost Whisperer. Anything with ghosts I love to be honest. I love me a ghost story. But yeah this one's set shortly before Halloween and I think that's gonna be a curse. It's set in Florida so I love books that are set in a different country to me as well. I'm just so excited to read it. It's quite short so I'll be able to get through it like that. And I also think it's on script. So yeah. The last three middle grade books that I picked up were three books in the Murder Most Unladylike series. We have Arsenic for Tea which is the second book. 
Jolly Foul Play, which is the fourth book, and Mistletoe and Murder, which is the fifth book in the Murder Most Unladylike series by Robin Stevens. It follows two kids who start up their own detective agency and they solve crimes and murders. I only read the first book last month. I talk more about it in my June wrap-up, so do check that out. But I already had the third book, so that's why I haven't, why I went second, fourth, and fifth. I do already have the third book, so the series ends well, next month actually in August the series ends so I'll pick up the other books and hopefully I can finish the series soon so yeah this is a middle grade murder mystery so a lot of mystery kind of themes in this book haul but I mean for a reason because again Believe It On 3 is mystery themed and I'm getting prepared. So on to the young adult books that I bought I got The Black Flamingo by Dean Atta. I read this one book We Are Black A Thorn which was hosted by Jesse of Bow Ties and Books and I love this book. I talk more about it again in my June wrap up but I love this book and this is about a young boy called Michael. He's a student and he's also black. He's homosexual and it goes through his sort of struggles. It's just told so beautifully and I absolutely adore this so I would definitely recommend checking this out. The fact that I've already read some of the books on this book haul list is incredible to me. And speaking of books that I've already read, I did read With the Fire on High by Elizabeth Acevedo last week, but I did pick this one up because I also got Clap When You Land, and I'm so excited to read this one. I haven't read this one yet, but it is on my July TBR. This one's told in verse, this one wasn't, um, but this one is about a an aspiring cook, and she is also a single mother, and it just, it's I don't want to say what I thought about it yet. And I don't really know much about Clap When You Land. I think it's about two twins who lose their father in a plane crash. So yeah, uh, excited to read that one. I also picked up Elsie Rosen's Camp, which is the new book by him. He also wrote Jack of Hearts and Other Parts, which I loved. Really wanted to read this in July, but it lost to a different book that I, I will talk about in, in a minute. But uh, this one is about a camp with queer kids in it. And I'm not too sure about anything else that happens in this other than I'm really excited to read it. The tagline is putting me out in the great outdoors. Funny, but on the art copy it said, are you top or bottom? <laughs> as in like, are you top bunk or bottom bunk? And I just find that hilarious as well. I also picked up You Should Save Me in a Crown by Leah Johnson and I don't really know much about this one other than the main character really wants to go to this elite college or is it a university? No, an uber elite college but she has no money to do that. I think the only way to really get a scholarship or anything is to be prom queen or something like that. I've seen some really good reviews about this one so far on booktube so I'm excited to read it. I absolutely love the cover, I think it's so cute. It also says a smart hilarious black girl magic rom-com. What more do you want? So two books that I hold because I lost <laughs> in the Play Your July TBR Right game and I ended up having to read two books that I really don't want to read and they were Infinity Sun by Adam Silvera and Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albertalli and I know you're screaming at me right now saying why did you buy them? You shouldn't have bought them. So I did mention in my July TBR video that when I lose a game and I have to read a book I don't want to read then I will have to buy it. I mean I totally forgot the fact that I have a perfectly good library for reading the anime. It wasn't open at the time but I think it's open now. I mean I did buy these. I did get them half price though with my bookseller discount and as soon as I finish these I will donate them to my library or I will do a giveaway. I will donate them somewhere. So it's not either going to waste. I'm not... I mean, yes, it was a waste of my money, but to be fair, I got two books for one. In the future, I can just borrow these books from the library if I wanted to. So, yeah, it's honestly, like, I will confront all of this in the August TBR video when I play the game again because there were some kinks I had to work through. But, yeah, anyway, that that's that spiel. But Infinity Sun is Adam Silvera's first, like, fantasy novel series. It's the first book in that series. Haven't heard good things about this at all. So, yeah, I don't really know that much about what it's about. There are gay phoenixes, I think, or something. There's a fight between good and evil, two brothers thrown into an epic war, I couldn't be asked. And then later on the offbeat is set in the same world as Simon versus the Homo Sapiens Agenda. I think it's called the Creekwood series or something like that. And this one follows Leia from Simon versus, and I didn't like Leia in Simon versus. In fact, I didn't like any of the characters in Simon versus really. I haven't heard great things about this one either, so <laughs> it's gonna be fun reading them. But I can donate these to my library and when I'm finished, they will not go to waste, don't worry. I also got Daughters of Nrai. Is that how you pronounce it? I don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Daughters of Nrai by Renny Kate and Mayo and this one follows two descendants of the gods so they're goddesses but I don't think they know about their powers. One of them grows up seeking adventure in her quiet small village 
the other one's more reserved and resides in the cold and political palace of Narai. I just cannot wait to read this. I really wanted to read this for a read for review, but it never happened. But it's gonna happen sooner or later. I'm just gonna put this on the table and read it, okay? But this was a totally a cover buy because I am in love with the cover, so. <laughs> and the last YA book that I bought was Good Girl, Bad Blood, which is the sequel to A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. And I just wanted this sequel for this because I wanted to complete that duology. I don't know if there's gonna be more in that series. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. I don't really know what it's about. And I don't want to know what it's about because it's a sequel, so. Yeah, this is the one that I got as well. <laughs> I didn't, don't really need to say much about this one, I feel. So I only have three adult books that I got. So one of them was The Wreck of the Titan by Morgan Robertson. Okay, so this one predicted the Titanic disaster that happened in 1912. This one came out in 1896, I think. No, 1898. This came out 14 years before the Titanic. And yet it has a disaster in this that mirrors the Titanic before it even happened. And the ship in this is called the Titan. Titan, Titanic, Titan, Titanic, it's sunk because of an iceberg. And this one is also proclaimed to be unsinkable. The Titanic was proclaimed to be unsinkable. This came out 14 years before the Titanic happened. The conspiracy theorist in me is just concocting so many things. So I do want to read this one and I want to compare it with the Titanic disaster and maybe do a video for that. So hopefully I can do that. Hopefully I can get around to doing that. I think it might be interesting, but it's so short. It's so super short, but I'm interested in reading it and comparing it to what actually happened. So yeah, I got this one. It was really cheap as well because it's so short. <laughs> and I also picked up Girl, Woman, Other by Bernadine Everisto because this was for a book club that I was part of and I talk about it in my June wrap up so I will talk more about it then. This does follow the lives of several black women in the UK and it's just a fantastic foray into British life, um, being a female in the UK, being black in the UK, being queer in the UK. And there's just so much going on in this and so much great character work that I do rave about this in my June wrap up, so I will not talk too much about it. But I did pick this up because I, I was waiting for the paperback and I love the cover of the paperback, so call me shallow. And then the last book is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I finished reading this last night. Won't tell you what I thought about it just yet. But this is set in the 1950s through to the 1990s but this does follow two twins and it goes through their life and they escape from their hometown when they're 16 and then when they come back things have changed they have changed and it's just oh, it's fantastic and I will talk about it in my July wrap-up so please wait for that I will do a proper full-on discussion about it because I have many many thoughts about this one and yeah I picked it up because one it was signed by the author in Waterstones and two love the cover and three, I heard so many great things about it on Booktube. So I'm glad I've read it. And yeah, I think you should read it as well. So I picked this one up. And if you can get a signed copy from Waterstones, do it. So those were the 33 books that I hold in June. And thank you so much to everybody who sent me something. Thank you to the publishers and the book box subscription boxes that sent me things. They were incredible. Thank you so, so much. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Please leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a comment. Let me know if you've read any of these, if you're interested in reading them. Hype me up for them as usual. And I'd love to talk to you in the comments. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.